Hi guys, so the drill that I will be analysing is called the wicket run or wicket drill. So first I'm going to talk about why the wicket drill is useful and how it promotes certain positions that are advantageous uh, to top speed running. Um, I'll go through those positions and then we'll talk about how it can be applied practically. So first up, let's have a look at the drill. So as you can see, the drill involves running over low hurdles. Each hurdle must be cleared while running at maximal or sub-maximal velocity. Running this way is thought to improve front side mechanics, posture at top speeds, increase force production and direction of strike. To avoid hitting the hurdles, the position of the ankle, knee and hip has to be slightly higher. This higher position helps to promote an upright posture when running at top speeds. The higher heel position required by the drill is thought to reduce kickback. Excessive kickback shortens the range of motion on the knee on the opposite leg, reducing vertical force production during strike. To demonstrate what I mean by kickback, let's compare these two images. The athlete on the left is kicking back slightly more than the athlete on the right. The left athlete's right hip is further into extension, which reduces the height of the opposite knee, as this is limited by the length of the hip flexors. The athlete on the right is able to get into a higher knee position and is therefore able to generate more force downwards and backwards. This still demonstrates the advantages of the drill quite nicely. As you can see, the presence of the hurdle demands a higher ankle, knee and hip position and avoids excessive kickback. Again, to avoid hitting the hurdles, athletes must run with a higher hip position. A higher hip ensures a tall upright running position. This allows for shorter ground contact times as the hip is less likely to flex and collapse. It remains stiffer, which utilizes a faster stretch shortening cycle. That is, assuming an athlete already possesses necessary strength and stiffness to achieve these positions. The advantages of a higher hip are demonstrated in this image. The yellow figure's higher hip causes foot strike to occur closer to the center of mass, increasing flight time and distance covered, while the red figure is overstriding. A better position at foot strike also means greater forces applied and shorter ground contact times as mentioned earlier. Lastly, increasing hip height and therefore allowing foot strike to occur closer to the centre of mass helps to reduce horizontal braking forces. Compare this to the red figure who is striking further away from the centre of mass, causing higher braking forces and longer ground contact times. As you can see, the drill encourages these positions. The spacing of the hurdles discourages the athlete from overstriding. Ensuring correct spacing for each athlete and cueing them to strike around halfway in between each hurdle is key to this. So in terms of practical application, the drill can be started from a five or six step running at sub-maximal speeds. This encourages the athlete to get into desirable positions when running at top speed. As technique and speed improves, a longer run in and further spaced out hurdle can be used as a progression. Initial hurdle spacings are determined by the height, speed and level of mastery of each athlete. This may throw up a problem when dealing with larger groups of athletes. However, personally, I would take a guided discovery approach and let the athletes determine their own spacings. After explaining the purpose and desired positions of the drill, I would allow the athletes to decide what's working for them. Not only could this save time and allow the coach to spend more time analysing technique rather than setting out cones, it ensures the athletes learn and retain the point of the drill in the hope that they try and emulate the techniques when running at full speed. It could be argued that with the younger athletes and very large groups, this would be difficult. In those cases, I would divide them into groups with the taller and faster athletes running over further spaced out hurdles, while the shorter and slower athletes using closer spaced hurdles. This is assuming the taller athletes are able to stride out further.